Well, it's one o'clock, and so to honor all of your time um, in this crazy world we're in, I would like to first introduce myself for some of you that I haven't seen on a Zoom call yet today. Um, I'm Christina Dernier, the Director for Communications, Events, and Youth Ministry for our Synod. It's been quite a ride at my first month in this position, but um, we're learning together and figuring out how to be church together during this time. Um, I have a short agenda um, for today, um, but first and most importantly, I'd like to ask Bishop Bill to start us off with um, some devotion. Thank you, Chris. I'm going to uh, invite you to speak along, uh, even though you're muted and the rest of us won't hear your voices. Um, it'd be good for you to hear your own voice lifted up together with uh, and knowing that others are lifting up their voice. This is from the responsive prayer in the Evangelical Lutheran worship. Show us your mercy, O God, and grant us your salvation. Give us the joy of your saving help again and sustain us with your bountiful spirit. Give peace in all the world for only in you can we live in safety. Keep the nations under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and sustain me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come before you. share a word from from the book of Isaiah the prophet Isaiah um, I observe that uh, sometimes these words of scripture sound a little foreign to us they're often the language is often pretty intense pretty extreme and can feel a little foreign to the kind of existence that we usually enjoy which is uh, times of peace and prosperity, generally speaking. Um, we, most of us have not lived through social or economic disruption of uh, the sort that we're living through now. But God's people throughout time and place have, and, uh, and th they know what it is uh, to live through upheaval such as the one we're living through. And I believe that uh, in these times we can relate to the kinds of language that we often hear in scripture. And so I, I share with you these words, which happen to be from today's lectionary, Old Testament reading for the, for the daily common lectionary. Uh, Yahweh, uh, Lord Hashem, is speaking through the prophet Isaiah. For a long time, I have held my peace. I have kept still and restrained myself. Now I will cry out like a woman in labor. I will gasp and pant. I will lay waste mountains and hills and dry up all their herbage. I will turn the rivers into islands and dry up the pools. I will lead the blind by a road they do not know. By paths they have not known. I will guide them. I will turn the darkness before them into light the rough places into level ground. These are the things I will do, and I will not forsake them. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, in you we live and move and have our being. Guide and govern us this day by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but remember that always we are walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Almighty God, bless us and defend us from all evil 
and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. All right. Well, before we jump into our agenda, I just want to say, uh, I want to make a comment around, um, I'm just basically signaling to Chris that I changed the agenda just slightly. Um, I want to just talk about how we are trying to provide leadership from this from the synod level. We are in a truly adaptive moment, aren't we? And uh, one of the things that um, that I've that I've learned in my um, in some of my other uh, in one of my other calling in life, and also recently in a book that I recently read called Nine Lies About Work, is the is is how leadership happens in an adaptive time, and so. We are not going to be issuing top-down goals or plans. Um, well, I see our function to be giving you as much good information as we can. Um, and then knowing that the, the situation on the ground is changing fast and you are smart, uh, capable, uh, equipped leaders, and uh, with good information, you can make good choices and decisions to move forward. Um, uh, the example oftentimes is used of General Stanley McChrystal when he took command of U.S. Special Forces in Iraq. Um, the old-fashioned way of doing business was that the, the orders would come down from on high. This is the plan. This is how to execute it. And they just couldn't keep up with the fast-changing environment that way. They finally figured out that what they really needed to be doing was just getting information down to the field and allowing the field to, empowering them to make choices and decisions that they needed to make in their time and place. And so that's how I understand that we're living into this time together, and that's how we're trying to provide leadership. And what I would just remind you is this, this vision that we've been messing with, uh, that we are people so freed by the gospel of Jesus Christ that we can be wholly devoted to loving Jesus and loving our neighbor. I'm seeing that. I'm seeing your whole, your being all in, so loving Jesus, loving your neighbor, it's a, the creative ways you're discovering, the courageous ways you're discovering to do that. I want to continue, I encourage you to continue. But also remember that um, uh, that little line, um, love your neighbor as yourself, right? So uh, take some time to love yourself, to give yourself the space for grace. Um, progress, not perfection, one step at a time. Um, can't solve it all in one day. Uh, you, you need to you need to work a normal day and get eight hours of sleep, move your body and speak to your Lord. Uh, make sure you're getting some time for rest. So um, we have our values, uh, faithfulness, authenticity, and love, faithfulness about being faithful with each other like we are here now and like you are being in your calls. And I'm seeing that unfolding. Thank you for that. Uh, authenticity, which is about claiming our unique gifts and honoring the gifts of others. And we're, we're seeing that in, in spades now with uh, people stepping up in new ways. Um, folks coming forward with gifts they have to share and you um, sharing the gifts that you have. And thank you for what you're doing to share uh, with Chris and with us here on the Synod staff so that she can push that out uh, via our web page and social media. And then finally, love. Love, which isn't just check in a box, but, but is doing our work in a way that it actually makes a difference, that people are loved and served. And wow, <laughs> it's amazing how you're doing that. I want to thank you for that. So I just wanted to preface our time together with those comments, and I'm going to turn it back over to Chris. Thank you, Bishop Bill. Um, one thing that has been super important to me in this role is to get you the best resources I can um, for both you and the people that you serve in your congregation and in your community. Um, so I do read through and watch all the videos that I find um, before I post them. Um, and so they've been vetted um, at least through my lens. Um, and most of the time I'm just using ELCA resources or partners like seminaries and other agencies like that. Um, because you guys are busy enough, you don't need to take the time to have to look to make sure there isn't something really weird at the end of one of the videos, which I've seen a couple of times. Um, so resources are very important. One thing that I've been learning and hearing and seeing is that the adrenaline rush is starting to come down. 
um, for the people and congregations. Like right away, it was like, oh goodness, I need to figure out how to record worship or figure out what my what my congregation that I serve needs. Um, and now since things are sort of getting into a new rhythm, um, the adrenaline rush is coming down and it's getting a little bit more tired. I put myself in timeout last night because I was a little emotional and upset. Um, and so uh, um, just taking care of yourself. And one resource that our Synod and the ELCA has is ELCA coaching. Um, we have some fantastic coaches in our Synod. Um, they're not counselors or therapists, but they're people to help um, think through things. So I've asked Pastor Keith to share a little bit more about ELCA coaching. Thank you, Chris, and a shout out to you on our behalf with everybody um, sharing what they know and what they experience and how we can learn from one another, and it does make a difference. And that's good that we can be mindful that we have within our midst uh, trained and certified coaches that are available uh, to be contacted and to explore whether that could be a beneficial relationship um, that really is focused on uh, with all the moving parts, the new normal, the um, recalibration, however you want to characterize it, that figuring out what your point A and point B is in a particular way, in a particular time, and that coach relationship through asking great questions and doing really deep listening uh, can help one move from point A to point B. It's about forward movement, uh, and it's about, uh, and especially in times of chaos, we're just wondering if this might not be something that's good to be available at your own uh, your own discernment and, and uh, consideration and other uh, our other partners and colleagues. So we do have a website. Uh, this is a part of the rolling out of resources, and we're just lifting up and highlighting one of them being uh, coaching. Within our synod, as we have it available through our uh, trained coaches, but also churchwide, is making available to any and all pastoral uh, and lay leaders some coaching webinars uh, specifically focused on different topics. And you'll see that among the rollouts too, related to these are resources available for your consideration or for those within your community of faith. Uh, that you think could benefit or at least would want to be and know about this and make some decisions about that. Thank you. Yeah, I will put out um, the information for the webinars and a link to, the EL, to our Synod's coaching site on our COVID-19 resource page um, and also in tomorrow's Northern Link. Um, one other resource that I have found very, very helpful um, and I posted it on social media, I believe yesterday on our Facebook, is LEAD. Um, it is a, um, they did a video right here, Digital Worship, um, and it's an hour long video and it's the most um, succinct and helpful hour video that I've seen. Um, I've seen a lot of videos. Um, just to kind of help overall with resources. Um, they have great resources down here. We have a lot of the same ones on our COVID, on our Synod's COVID-19 resource. But um, if you had an hour um, and kind of want a snapshot on digital worship, um, they kind of, they did an excellent job with preaching and sharing resources and different things. And so there's a link to this on our COVID-19 um, resource page, but also on our Synod's Facebook group as well. Um, and then one thing that our, I'm part of some ELCA Synod communicators groups we've been wondering about is um, how to reach out to our less tech savvy um, people in our congregations and pastors. One thing that will be going out in the mail today to congregations is a letter. Um, just with some of the resources we've had with the letter Bishop Bill wrote last week that got emailed to all of you. Um, but an actual piece of mail um, that might be kind of uh, the next wave. Um, since most people in, like you are all made it to the Zoom site, but you know you're um, your 
congregations better um, and know who and who can't um, access things. Um, and so I believe Pastor Justin has some um, words to share about um, some help in this area too. If I could just uh, jump in here, Chris. Um, so in making our calls, uh, we're reach, reaching out to all of you and our whole staff reaching out. And uh, I, I had a conversation with Pastor Justin yesterday and he was uh, saying it'd be great to be able to somehow network with those less tech savvy folks uh, are the ones that are struggling to figure out how to do this. And so I know, uh, I thought I'd just invite Justin to share his idea. And Justin, I'm guessing you're on my screen, you're right next to Hans Dahl. And I'm guessing he would like to be, he would be able to be a partner in this as well. So, uh, but I'll just turn it over to you. Oh, I, I actually, I mean, some of that uh, came from Hans Dahl uh, from his blog. And so, I mean, we're posting stuff that we're um, gleaning from all the time. And I just, I, I thank you for the Senate to be kind of reaching far forward. So you kind of stole my thunder already because uh, you, you already made mention that uh, obviously um, those that are on Zoom uh, probably don't need this resource, but you've guys reached forward and are now sending a letter to communicate that. Um, I guess just for me, it's, it's my willingness um, to say, look, I want to be one of those points of contact. I want to be one of those reference points um, with a phone number, with, with a call. Um, but ways in which we can partner in a way sharing each other's online platforms or um, we're looking at trying to do online Sunday school, but I know that my staff is already overtaxed. And so is there a way that we can share those, compile those online resources together uh, or take what you're doing and actually put it on our platform, obviously giving you credit. We don't want to plagiarize or anything like that, but is there a way that we can share these resources amongst each other? And, and I realize that's probably already occurring already. Um, so I'm behind the curveball there too. Um, but I, I have always, um, in the, always in the forefront of my mind, I'm always trying to reflect upon how us as ELCA congregations can partner together uh, to share the resources that we have and acknowledge that there's congregations that do it better than, than my congregation can, and maybe there's areas that my congregation has a strength and we can leverage these things together when it comes to staff or online tools or, or whatever it may, may be. And so I guess um, not to take any more time than, than needed, um, because I'm probably just reiterating stuff that's already been said, is that uh, I, I want to put our congregation out there saying, not only do we need help, um, but also we can give it as well. Um, and so, um, however, we, we determine how to get that, those numbers out to maybe the, the pastors that need to kind of reach out, um, to identify who those pastors would be, not to, not to judge and not to accuse, um, because I'm learning stuff every day, um, and new things, uh, that I've kind of found as a stumbling block. Um, but through your help, through the Synod, um, and through pastor's counsel on this very site, um, I continue to be encouraged. So, um. Well, there, there was a couple of ideas that, that you uh, alluded to there and I wanted to lift up. One was like um, the idea of if, uh, if a congregation knows that some other congregation is utilizing our platform or our worship, that there might be an opportunity to also include that community in the, in the prayers of the day or something like that. Uh, I think that's a great idea. But just this idea of networking, I believe that we're it, it more and more will become curators rather than cre primarily creators, more curators than creators of resources for our people um, because of the, the, the opportunity that emerges in a time like this. So anybody want to add anything to that? I did start a Google spreadsheet that is on our COVID-19 resource page um, for people to put on there. Um, their online presence, whether they had it already, um, or it's something that they started including Bible studies. I know some youth groups are doing it as well. And so there's spots for that and some contact information. Um, there's a link to it um, that will be in the Northern Lights again tomorrow. So I encourage you guys um, to look at that and put in your information there. Um, Pastor Hans, is there anything you'd like to add? You had a great blog post earlier. Can I, can I add one more thing? Sorry, yeah. and then I'll be quiet. No, go ahead. Then no. it's all Pastor Hans. Um, no, I, I, I think with the, with the online platforms, I, I think Bishop Bill said it, said it well, 
um, is that if, if there's a pastor out there that really has an important message that they want to communicate to their congregation, I got no problem putting it up on my, on our platform and making sure that their congregation is aware of it, that, Hey, your pastor is reaching out to you through our platform. Um, or if it's just simply a prayer of the day that they've written and, uh, and really working that way with the prayers of the church and things like that. So um, I'm, I'm just excited because I would like to have other pastors' voices in the midst of our online experience because people get sick of hearing me talk like you probably are now. Now, Pastor Hans. <laughs> Justin, you're too hard on yourself. You're a great leader. Uh, hey, folks, I know uh, you all are working really, really hard to, to make this happen. And uh, I just want to say thanks for your hard work. Thanks for loving your people. And uh, most of us didn't go to seminary with any idea that we'd be doing anything like this. So thanks for your hard work. Um, at Calvary, we, uh, we, a couple of things I think we're, uh, we're not doing everything right, that's for sure. But a couple of things I think we're doing, doing pretty well. Um, with our team, uh, we meet daily at 9 o'clock. Uh, via Zoom, just to connect with each other. And that's been a really important thing. Um, I'm also meeting with my financial team, as well as our council via Zoom, really pretty regularly. So Zoom is uh, really inexpensive, 15 bucks. If you haven't signed up for it, get out there, sign up for it. Um, I, the other thing I think at Calvary, we, um, if you go to our homepage, our website, which is just calvaryalec.org. Um, we are putting all our resources that we've created, all the videos we put on Facebook, all our worship services, our discussion guides that are based on that, all the kids stuff we're putting out. You can find it all on our, on our uh, website. And I know there are a couple of churches that are already using some of those. And we have, we have used, some, we've taken many of those from other organizations that are saying right now, these are all yours for free. Like there are a couple of places um, for like kids ministry. We're going to Orange. If you, if you haven't heard of Orange before, go to thinkorange.com. They have a bunch of kids resources that they are just giving away for free right now. Um, not of our sort of theological background, but producing some really good stuff is Life Church. So if you go to life.church, um, you have to kind of look through, pick through a little bit to make sure it fits our theological lens, but they're also putting out some really good free kid stuff right now. And so would invite you to go out there. But um, I, Justin, I couldn't agree more. If there's any way that we can partner together and share resources. Uh, that's what we want to do uh, at Calvary. Um, if we can be a source of help, um, oh gosh, let me know. Thank you. And I'll just, um, as you come online, if you speak, just say who you are and where you're serving, and that'd be great. Yeah, and I see some of you guys are putting um, things in the um, chat, and towards the end, I will make sure that we um, get to those things as well. So thank you for that. Um, and so the next piece that is coming bubbling up um, from all of these changes is stewardship. Um, the need for stewardship, um, what that looks like in times of stress and financial stress as well. Um, so one I shared last week, but online giving is a great resource. Um, I served in a congregation that had a lot of cabin people. And so it was important just in a yearly cycle um, to have online giving to get through the summer. Um, but tithely, and is a free, um, they take a percentage of um, the offering, but it's free for the congregation, bank co. Um, and then Amazon Smile, I've been buying a lot more on Amazon and I'm supporting the Synod um, through my online purchases, um, but it's really easy to sign up for Amazon Smile and there's a link to that on the COVID-19 resource page as well. And I'm gonna ask Pastor Keith Zay to share a little bit more about um, stewardship. 
Thank you, Chris. I uh, posted on the Zoom group chat of uh, the website, and it, and and uh, the site's going to be made available in a variety of ways about the accumulating and the sharing coming from you folks, especially uh, resources that we can uh, mine and utilize and adapt. We've been so appreciative of the letters that you as pastors are writing, pastoral letters to your congregation, I mean, to uh, to your faith communities, to the disciples that you walk with, um, have been so helpful, and, and especially the emphasis on worship. Um, and then how to experience worship in this um, virtual way that we've been talking about. And knowing, though, this feeds right in, Justin and Hans and others, what we talked about, that not everybody maybe has the same uh, uh, capacity or ability, but that doesn't mean they can't grow into that. And I think there's a lot of educating and a lot of tooling that will happen. But what I wanted to put before you is how might we, as an act of worship, make provision or be creative in inviting folks that are worshiping with us through various platforms uh, to, take a, to receive an offering as an act of worship. And so uh, today at 2.30, our uh, steward leaders from across the synod that are part of the stewardship table are going to be thinking out loud and imagining some potential uh, ideas or resources that we might include in that best practice uh, menu of resources regarding stewardship. This being with an emphasis on financial stewardship as we are paying attention to uh, guarding health and also coming alongside those who become ill and all that goes with this time that we're in, that how we can also be attentive um, to our health, our financial health, uh, as best as we can in the circumstances that we're in. So what I wanna invite you to do is, would you give some thought to uh, any ideas that come to you about how we might um, extend that encouragement uh, actually receive gracefully, graciously uh, the offerings uh, for ministry that we can provide ongoing support uh, to our congregations and beyond our congregation to the Synod. And we're thinking too, Bishop Bill and I were visiting, there's this old, old method too called the U.S. Mail, and we might think that in addition to some pastoral type letters, uh, one thing we're thinking as a resource, if we had a sample or two or three of, of a pastoral type letter from a pastor to a congregation that address the opportunities and need for giving uh, financially and making the ask in a meaningful, uh, respectful, sensitive way, but forthright nonetheless, um, wholly devoted uh, frame of reference and mindset. Um, we would be glad for that, but also ways that you're finding or would consider finding for how might we receive the offering as an act of worship, as a way of supporting ministry, and know that there's hardships galore, not only to health and family and communities, but there's financial hardships as well. And it's in that environment and that context that we would think of this. And for my take, those Macedonian Christian ancestors back in the first century that the Apostle Paul writes about in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, pretty inspiring, I think, and, and motivating to me. And I wonder for all of us, if we could give our own heart and thought to that. So I actually, look at this. Can you see, there's my email address. This is like Vanna White, but I also posted it on the Zoom group chat. And uh, again, would really uh, be glad for any wisdom you have or thoughts, but also let you know that there, we have leaders in our synod that are gifted and, and passionate about stewardship holistically, but also financially. And that would include me, because that's an important part of the work I'm called to do, to come alongside you in any way that you would find helpful. Uh, in the meantime, we'll surface and share and learn from resources and whatever we might consider best practices. Thank you. Yeah, one thing that Pastor Keith and I were talking about is um, trying to find a couple of different ways. Um, so like if you're having worship, um, virtual live stream worship or recorded worship, having a separate time to talk about offering. And um, I just did a simple search yesterday. Um, this was one that popped up on Pinterest. Um, and then, you know, because people are 
so um, have a lot more time on their hands. There's some craftier um, ways, um, especially if you look up widows might um, craft. Um, there came a couple of different ideas on how to do offering. Um, and then I called Melbergs, um, our local Moorhead um, Christian supplier, church supplier, and they're open. They'll do curbside delivery. They'll do local free delivery, um, and they'll deliver throughout all of um, our synod um, if there's things that you need um, from them as well. Um, and so they are open um, for business. Um, and we're thankful for the work that they do and share. So thinking um, a little differently um, when, when evil. Um, and then a couple other notes before I open up for some questions and comments. Um, we have a couple of Zooms that have been talked about in emails, but I just wanted to say them out loud as well. Next Monday, March 30th at 7 p.m., we're gonna host a Zoom call for council presidents. Um, so let your congregation presidents know, um, or vice president, if there is, um, if they want to listen in, um, just to kind of make sure that um, the synod is reaching out to them and giving them resources in this time, as well as every other Thursday. So the next one would be April 2nd. Um, I'm hosting a first third of life. Um, so for those who do ministry with the first third of life, um, every other Thursday at one o'clock, at 11 o'clock. Um, so we're reaching out to those and we'll continue doing this uh, for the time being during our physical distancing um, every Tuesday, it's Tuesday, right? Um, at one o'clock, we, um, we will have this time and share resources and give each other encouragement. It will look differently each time. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to Bishop Bill to kind of facilitate some questions and um, conversations and concerns. Yeah, just a, a couple of things. Thank you, Chris, and thanks everybody uh, for being here, for your wisdom, and mostly for your just uh, courageous and creative ministry. Um, I just, a couple of things. One, to put it in your mind, because we need to have the conversation. Right now, um, as the pastor of this synod, um, my guidance around the sacrament is that we see this as a period of fasting from the sacrament. There's a lot of discussion across the ELCA and among the Conference of Bishops um, around that. And most of the bishops are following that guidance. A couple have gone their own way on that. Um, my feeling is that this will probably change, um, but I don't know when. And when we change, I want us to change together and in a thoughtful way. Um, but for now, I'm, um, it's my sense that the sort of the clamoring that's out there is really coming from pastors not from people of the congregation. Um, I think when, when we start to hear this as a deep hunger of our people, that's when we will have to make this move. Um, and then we'll do it in a way that's thoughtful and faithful. So I, this, we could talk for hours about that, and I do want to address this again. Um, but I invite you to communicate with me about that and we'll cover that again as we will keep touching base on that as we move forward. Um, I uh, also saw the question from Kristen, Pastor Kristen Osterkamp, a great question around privacy concerns and we're gonna research that and get back to you. Um, that's a great question. I'm sure there's some good articles out there already. We'll just find the best ones and, and make them available to you. So. This is going to be a little bit of a free for all, and we don't know what this will be like because, but um, I just want to say if there's anyone that wants to share a thought, a concern, a prayer need, anything at all that would be uh, helpful for the good of the cause. I'll go ahead and go first. Um, it's a question about questions. A few people have been um, using this. Please say your, 
say your name and where you're serving. Sorry, sorry. Pastor Al Brooks, uh, Wild Rice Parish, Twin Valley, Wabin. Um, some people have been asking questions already on the chat function. I don't know if this is a Chris question or who, but can those be either answered in this next half hour or can they be, can they be electronically saved and answered later? Because I don't want to ignore those people that were the first ones in line. I, I'm looking at those um, and the one about privacy, I'll get to and find good helpful resources on that. The next one, um, Rich asked if um, about an Android friendly version of the Switcher app. Um, Pastor Hans, do you know um, anything to that? Yeah, I shared with Rich privately. I'll share okay. that publicly um here uh, a video resource for live streaming uh straight to youtube and that might have the answers uh you're looking for um if people you know i'll i'll do a little more research and and share that with you chris okay thank you yep. and i know sometimes there's been um to have youtube live streaming you have to have so many subscribers um, and so make sure you research that as well, right? Pastor Hans is there, I believe that's a thing. Yeah, I, we don't live stream to YouTube. What we do, we actually cheat and we don't do live streaming. We pre-record everything. Um, I feel like it takes the awkwardness out of it for us and for everybody else. So we pre-record and do a little bit of editing with that. Um, and so, yeah, that's... That's how we do it. I, I, we've just taken an approach that we want it to feel a little more intimate. And so it's not for everybody, but that's how, how we do it. All right, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, Corey Furman, First Lutheran. Uh, you don't need um, a certain mask to live stream if you want to do that. That's only if you're receiving monitor uh, money from ads. Uh, so you can live stream without that. And we live stream two worships, and now we're moving away from it where we're going to be um, uh, recording beforehand and then just making it available at the worship time. Take that stress and pressure off. Uh, but the other thing I wanted to throw out there, and this came from uh, presiding Bishop Eaton's letter a couple of weeks ago, uh, many cams or many cam is another... Um, software that will go right to YouTube. And there is a free version of that. The thing, the reason we chose Minicam is it works for both Android, PC, and Mac, and Apple. So you know, it covers all of your, your, your bases there. I see the question from Pastor Mary Beth McGovan on um, sharing our Facebook, our individual Facebook pages, uh, having a sort of a, a trove of all our our directory. And so, and I see Chris respond to that. That's a great idea. Thanks for that. Uh, this is Hans Dahl uh, in Alexandria. I'd love to hear um, just what People, I think um, if, if I got my finger on the pulse of where most of us are at, we're pretty anxious about the financial side of all this. Um, and I've had a, a few folks reach out to me. Um, I would love to hear from others kind of where you're at and how you're feeling and uh, how any, any steps you've taken beyond just simply offering online worship or online offering. Uh, anything you've taken uh, that seems to be, any steps you've taken that seem to be helpful uh, in communicating with your congregations around, around offerings? I'm curious how people feel. Um, I've had some conversation with my president and uh, I'm feeling- uh, Please say your name and where oh, you're serving. I apologize. Phil Tobin from Central Lutheran in Pelican Rapids. And uh, I've had some conversation um, around my salary and I, and I feel I'm, 
I just been feeling called to kind of stick to last year's salary. I had a, I had a quarter time increase. And I'm just wondering how people feel about that. We've, in our conversation, we've said, well, let's kind of see how things go till the end of April. But uh, is that a stewardship issue for us as leaders? I'm curious how people feel. Does that understand, do you understand my question? Um, is that a way of, of, of being good stewards if we can afford it? I guess is a bit, obviously, if we can afford it. That's my question. I would just offer that that might be a case by case basis. We have fielded questions from pastors regarding how, what's uh, the proper process for congregations uh, um, who are beginning to have the conversation about salary changes. Um, there have been at least a couple of congregations that have just informed their pastor that their salary is going down, but that, that, that can't happen. Um, it has to, you have to follow the constitution. And so the pastor does, or pastor or um, deacon need to agree to the changes just, and there's a way that you can kind of view this just like you view the annual revision of the budget um, in that, uh, you know, salary changes happen every year and those can happen. Uh, with the consent of the rostered minister, the person under call. Um, and uh, if the person under call does not consent, there's a process in the Constitution for revising the letter of call, which requires a congregational meeting and a two thirds vote. We are going to, one of the things we'll cover with presidents, and we will be producing a resource uh, related to that as well how to conduct uh, congregational meetings that are in keeping with our. The LCA Constitution and Minnesota state law. Um, if I can jump in, I'm Kristen Osterkamp from Goodridge, Minnesota. And uh, we are in the process today of sending out quarterly giving statements. We're doing it a couple weeks early uh, because typically we would send them out after the 1st of April. Um, but it's kind of a natural time, at least in our parish, for when we, uh, when we do those things. So. We're sending, sending out a letter, sending out those giving statements, sending out that uh, form. We use Vanco uh, here in, in Goodridge. Um, so we're kind of, you know, it, it's a natural time for us anyway in our pattern of things to send out that letter. Um, the other thing that I want to say is that as leaders, I think it's really important for us to model our own uh, stewardship and giving to our congregations. Um, I make every effort to uh, to put my tithe forth, and and so I think that that um, if we continue to work really hard and strive to model that um, that discipline, I think that will go a long way um, in the midst of this as well. Any other, I think uh, the question was, what are you seeing? I think it comes uh, basically, if I understand it, was what, what are you seeing with, uh, in terms of uh, stewardship and uh, generosity and giving? How, um, are you seeing big impacts right now? Are, are people stepping up to the challenge of giving in a different way? What are you, what are you noticing? This um, is Pastor Hope. Oops. Are you okay? This is Pastor Hope Deutsch, serving with Living Grace Lutheran and Grand Park Rolog in Holly, Minnesota. Um, so at Living Grace, the leadership team has asked me to send out a letter um, because there are people, we've got an older congregation that um, they don't have internet access, they don't even have an email. So when I send out that letter, I'm also sending out a small offering envelope for them with the church's address on it so that they can easily return it. I'm taking away any excuses of them not finding an address or anything like that. But then I'm also taking it a step further and I'm writing a devotion um, for them because I know that they're not gonna be able to see the online worship service. So I'm gonna provide them with a devotion that they can read in their home, at least one devotion, if not a couple. Would it be helpful, Hope, to have 
like radio church services on there and or like television ones that are like hope approved right. um, as because there's some not awesome um i mean worship is for everybody but like for um like more pastor hope approved sort of ways that they can tune in yeah so i am also going to include in that letter um a list of resources everything from youth to seniors and such um and i will include grand park Rolog and living grace did a mutual service together this last Sunday. And uh, one of our council presidents has connections. So we're going to get that put on the Holly cable, our local cable and in Barnesville. So I would encourage you to do that as well. Um, because maybe they've got cable if they don't have the internet. Anyone else want to chime in uh, with a uh, concern or uh an idea or anything at all before I, I just have a question, one question to ask uh, uh, as a discussion question before we wrap up. One of the things I'm considering for stewardship. Please is, say your name. Oh, uh, Dean, Dean Greer, First Lutheran Church of Audubon. Uh, one of the things I'm considering for stewardship is because we had at our live broadcast um, more guests than members um, and a lot of them were commenting and uh, folks that won't come into inside the church uh, but were very grateful for the opportunity to worship uh, and talked about their faith uh, one of the things i'm considering is if uh, or and when i make a, a stewardship a financial stewardship appeal during uh, live broadcast worship is to mention explicitly that those who are undergoing economic hardship and our guests for the day are uh, not expected to be contributing, although if the spirit leads them so, they're uh, certainly welcome to. Thank you. It's so, could I, Bishop, could I just share one thing real quick, just as I listen, this is Hans Dahl. Um, I think part of what we need to do is, you know, people have, have grown up placing their offerings in the plate and they've watched their parents, you know, many of them. And I wonder if, if the kind of gracious approach to all this is to just breathe for a moment and, and recognize that what we're doing is, is we're helping people transition into this new era of, of the world that we live in and to sort of graciously praise them for their generosity and, and, um, praise them for the generosity that you know is in their hearts and to as the church maybe the stance we take is to say we're going to help you continue to live that generosity that you want to live that you've always lived I think sometimes our language gets kind of kind of weird when we get uh, anxious and, and so part of this is for us to check our anxiety and to just pause for a few weeks and, and be able to say, you know what, we're going to help you because we know you want to be generous. You're going to be generous. And, and here are the ways that we're going to help you continue to live that generosity in this new world. Um, I think there's something to kind of a stance in terms of how you communicate that with, with the congregation. So I don't know if that helps, but that's what we're, we're thinking about here. Well, and hopefully, uh, thank you for that, Pastor Hans. Hopefully, that's that's kind of the message all along is that we're what we're doing is enabling a faith practice of generosity, and finding ways to help people live into that as a as a way of practicing faith and a way of living out that generosity. And, and yeah, that's a good reminder that that's what we're about here too is keeping that faith practice alive. And the, uh, like the loaves and the fishes, you know, the secondary benefit of the feeding of the 5,000 was that there were 12 baskets left over for the disciples. So the secondary benefit, benefit of the, the abundance uh, that God provides is that there will be some for our ministry efforts as well. But it's really about practicing that generosity. Um, and with that um, note about generosity and bread, um, beautiful segue. Thank you, Bishop Bill. Um, <clears throat> I got word 
that um, Churches United for the Homeless is in desperate need for sliced bread. So if you're in the area um, and have a way to help them out, um, that is a great way to share in your abundance. Um, and then, excuse me, I've been talking a lot today. Um, a couple other just things that best practices I wanted to share before time um, gets away is one thing that Pastor Hans shared about um, pre-recording, um, it makes it less um, awkward, um, but also there has been a lot of um, conversation in communicator groups that the internet has like died on them during a Facebook Live or um, there's been people who have um, like in a Zoom meeting put on like gone to the bathroom with their camera on or have um, um, put on some inappropriate things during a Zoom meeting. Um, and so just do best practices if you're doing a Zoom meeting and you don't want other presenters or talkers, you can um, close video and voice. Um, and pre-recording is best unless you need that um, like interaction for something like a Bible study. Um, so that's just a good pre-practice. Um, and then another, somebody brought up about um, knowing about when time frame for physical distancing. I look at the CDC and the Minnesota Department of Health um, website several times a day and that's where we're getting our information from and we don't know, um, yeah, and Bishop Bill mentioned that um, as well. And so I think that um, we'll know more when we know more. Um, things haven't changed. So Bishop Bill, do you want to say anything else about that? Get dicey if the president is giving one type of guidance and all public health officials are giving another type of guidance. We here in Minnesota, if you need to throw me under the bus, go ahead. Um, you can say the bishop is following the advice of our governor and of our and our public health professionals and and uh, strongly in recommending that we not hold public worship until it's until uh, experts agree it's safe to do so. So that'll be our, my stance. And uh, I, I'm uh, bound to obey the commander in chief when I'm wearing my uniform, but not when I'm wearing this cross. And if um, Pastor Laurel from First in Detroit Lakes um, shared that she has members getting fabric um, to sew masks if you have um, stories like that, share that with me. I would love to share um, stories about how people are making a difference in this time. Um, so um, please email me those stories and I can share them because um, we need stories of hope and happy stories now. So sorry, Bishop Bill, it's all yours again. I was just gonna ask, and we only have a few minutes left, but I, um, what are you, uh, what are you finding uh, What's you been your favorite way to be refreshed in these anxious, uh, busy times? What what are you? How have you found refreshment and renewal? Just throw it out there. Like her walks. Humor. Listening to birds as they uh, just outside the window or on a little walk around the neighborhood humor of any kind so with that in mind i'm going to throw something out here let's i'm going to have a little fun here i challenge my church uh, as they watch me on facebook i'm going to challenge all you guys it looks like i'm i might be behind the curve here and this isn't gender specific but let's have a beard growing contest until we're back with our congregations so i got a ways to go a lot of you guys look like you're ahead of me but let's have some fun with it I bought myself flowers yesterday. A good friend who's been is, was in Italy, and she got out of self quarantine yesterday. And uh, I bought myself and my mom and my sister flowers. I'm uh, taking ballet lessons online. <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, I'm going to. Uh, 
share a little video that's from uh, some folks in my part of the world where I used to come from. And uh, these are, this is a group of uh, musicians from a Catholic high school in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. I found it delightful and I, I hope you will too. I think there's a way I can sh sh show this video to you. Um, here we go. I'm going to try this. Hold on. Here we go. Then I have to figure out how to share the audio too. Choo choo choo. Hang in there with me, folks. Let me just uh, share my audio. Same system. Well, we're going to try. Let me know if you can hear this. Hang on. Nope, you can't hear it. All right. I apologize. I'll, I'll uh, do my research ahead of time next time and figure out how to share my audio with you. We're learning as we go. Um, it's an awesome, it's uh, basically a song, um, wherever you go, you really shouldn't be there. <laughs> so anyway, um, who wants to pray us out? I was asked by Chris to do just that. And All right. The Lord be with you. We pray to you, Almighty God, in this time of the spreading COVID-19 disease. You are our refuge and our strength, a very present help in time of trouble. Do not let us fail in the face of this tragedy. Uphold us with your love and give us the strength we need. Help us in our confusion and guide our actions. Heal the hurt, console the bereaved and afflicted, protect the innocent and helpless, and deliver any who are and will continue to be in peril. For the sake of your great mercy in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you everybody for your good work in ministry. I'm praying for you every day as are the rest of us on Synod staff, and uh, reach out with your great ideas and your questions, and we'll see you uh, uh, probably in another Zoom meeting somewhere, but we'll be right back here at the same time next week. God's peace. Bill, this is Pastor Michael, uh, Faith Lutheran Church. Just wondering if you could share that link from the YouTube video that you were about to show us. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I'll, I'll put it up on my Facebook page. Okay, thank you. All right, take care.